Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the theme-based research project's presentation under the theme, Developing a Sustainable Environment. We are very delighted to have Professor Ki, Wing Hong Ki to be our facilitator of this presentation session. Professor Ki is a professor of the Department of Electronic and Computer Engineering at the Uni Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. He is an expert in power management circuits and system. May I now pass on the stage to Professor Key, please. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, symposium. So this comes to the last talk of the, uh, of the day, of this, at least for this uh, lecture hall. So um, our talk will be conducted by Professor Kei-Mei Lau. So um, the talk will be on cost-effective and eco-friendly LED system on a chip. Um, because actually I also a co-eye of this uh, project, so maybe I'll also say a few words about this project. So Professor Lau is going to talk about three of the systems that we are going to, uh, uh, that, that we have been working on. Uh, the first two is related to LED lighting, and the third one is on LED on uh, a micro display. Uh, with this, maybe i give a little introduction to Professor Lau. Uh, professor Lau joined HKUST in the year of 2000, and she is now the fan professor of engineering at the, universe, at, at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Uh, she established the Photonic Technology Center for R&D effort um, in free fine materials, optoelectronics, high power, and high speed devices. Without further delay, may I invite uh, Professor Lau to, uh, to be on the stage and pass the time to her. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to tell you about this uh, project that we have been working on for the past uh, five years. Uh, actually, the work started even earlier than that, and uh, particularly the, the uh, micro display uh, project. And uh, for the LED components, uh, we started working on the LEDs um, like even much before that. Um, so we did so much work. Uh, like, uh, in this uh, project, and uh, I can only select some of the system work that we did under this uh, project to uh, tell you about. And there are um, many others, uh, and uh, the students that work on the devices and, um, and work on circuit, and uh, we simply uh, don't have time to cover them all. Uh, but first of all, I want to thank the two previous speakers that um, they were also related to LED, um, particularly Professor Vivian Yam. Um, all you have to do is just take out the O, and then all the introduction will apply to the project here, the motivation and why we need to conserve energy, because the lighting, it uh, consumes like more than 20% of the, the um, electricity. And, uh, and then with the LED, um, then uh, we can have, um, the, I'm taking the example of um, the China solid state lighting, uh, Wu Lin, and uh, he's been uh, also promoting solid state lighting project for many years. And he said with the solid state lighting, we can save the whole, um, the gorge dam project, the power that we can save. And so this is a, that's a give you some idea of the, the, the amount of power that can be saved if we switch everything from incandescent lighting to a solid state lighting. So that was the motivation. And then um, Professor Wang Hui also talked about the LED system work, and some of them were related. And, but on our project, we are in a more in the fundamental level and how we connect the devices and, um, and the, the um, um, control, the ICE design, and also the packaging technology, and then how we uh, came up with uh, this um, LED lighting system. So the, uh, the, the um, example that I'm going to give you is a two um, satellite lighting uh, system on the chip system that we did. And then, um, and then the third one is a special one that's uh, mainly it's uh, Professor Philip Mock is the driver, and uh, he came up with this uh, inductless um, LED system, 
and all this uh, one of a kind uh, driver system, and they require a custom made LEDs. And so this uh, project it will combine the our um, LED technology with the IC technology, and that we can uh, realize this um, this uh, project that we do here is a two LED lighting project. And then uh, the fourth one is, um, is the integration of uh, two uh, power devices. And uh, we convert the, the, um, the LED, which is a two terminal a current control device. And uh, while we were working on this, a lot of people that asked me, um, particularly the, the, the driver, the IC designer, is that, oh, it's such a, a difficult thing to work with because it's a current control device. Everything is voltage control. So then we came up with this uh, turning a two terminal um, current control device into a three terminal, a voltage control device. So this one, um, we just uh, demonstrate uh, how this uh, three terminal device that, uh, that we realize and then for the future applications it, um, it will be up to the future um, designers that, uh, to use this uh, particular technology. And then the fifth one is the, um, uh, the LED on silicon micro display system that we have been working on for over 10 years. And then, but uh, under this uh, project, then we did a lot of advancement um, and then uh, and with the uh, visible light communication um, systems that Professor Yu um, have been working on, uh, has been working on for the past few years. And all these um, systems, and you can see the demo and the posters just outside. And you can see the real thing. And then I'll have a brief conclusion. Okay, so first of all, our main thing is the integration. So what is the integration is uh, what we, uh, you can see from this uh, picture here that there are many components uh, in uh, just a regular LED light bulb. So these are the uh, package LEDs. This is uh, some kind of a conventional LED light bulb that people make. And then you have this uh, a transformer, an inductor, and then uh, this uh, huge uh, humongous heat sink. And then uh, all this uh, put together, if uh, you have been buying this uh, light bulb, it's uh, very heavy and then it generates a lot of heat. And then what in this uh, project that we were trying to do is uh, how do we miniaturize this, uh, this uh, whole thing, even though um, people have been able to stuff everything together inside this uh, light bulb here. But what we want to do is uh, if we can get rid of the individually packaged LEDs, and then we can get rid of the inductor and the control, and we can miniaturize it. We can everything put everything on the chip. So this light bulb can be miniaturized, so you can have lighting any way you want it. And then I want to use an old um, advertising slogan, have it your way. So for the LED, or display, you can have it your way, any size, any way you want to control. And this is uh, our ultimate goal, is uh, having the system on the chip, LED system on the chip. So this is uh, one of the examples that I'm going to show you here. It is uh, in the LED chip that was custom made um, at our, our university. And then this uh, control IC that was uh, designed by uh, our team member. And then this is an inductor. Inductor, usually what you see is uh, this uh, big coil that you see that people, even though it's uh, small, it's uh, still like a few, maybe a few centimeters big. And, but what we have here is uh, Professor Johnny Singh's work. And um, he's able to have this inductor. It's embedded in the silicon. So we'll be able to have this uh, everything the LED, the control uh, IC, and the embedded uh, power inductor on the back side. So everything, this is um, a silicon carrier. It's a 20 millimeter, it's a two centimeter on one side and 1.2 centimeter on the other side. So 
this is a, it's just some overview. Again, this is a more, we get into more technical, and then the uh, specification is so you can drive this with 110 volt AC power, and then the output is uh, up to uh, three watt, and then the switching frequency is uh, one megahertz. And this is a um, photograph of the silicon carrier that I show you. Um, so this, um, this is a schematic of the controller of the LED uh, string that we make. And then this uh, circuit um, topology is the folding but DCM. So you gotta ask my, um, our circuit designer about more detail. So these are the major components. Again, this is uh, the high voltage LED that uh, we make at our university that can get up to 110 volts. And then this is the backside of the embedded inductor on the silicon. And then this is um, the driver IC, the DCM LED driver. Um, this is uh, made by um, 0.35 micron technology and 700 volt. Um, that is, um, this is everything that we are able to put them together into a two centimeter and, uh, and 1.2 centimeter uh, silicon carrier. And the size of it um, is so small, and you can, again, back to the, you can have the lighting your way, and any shape, any size that you want it, and you can combine it. So this is um, our approach, and uh, with this embedded um, inductor, and then the control IC, the LED chip, and uh, we can uh, connect everything together with the uh, flip chip technology and also this uh, vehicle TSV technology and with the top metal routing and to connect all the components together. So this is a, a, a schematic of the detail how we fabricate the high voltage uh, LED. And you probably heard of this uh, HB LED um, if um, you get on the internet or whatever um, commercial uh, people that have uh, also made this uh, high voltage LED, but it's uh, different. And what they were trying to make is that the high voltage LED is uh, combined with the regular uh, conventional driver. So essentially it's uh, the, the positive and negative uh, AC voltage. So half of it's on um, half of the time and half of it is off. And in our case, uh, and we custom make it to our own IC driver. So it, it's uh, on most of the time and, uh, and uh, all the time that you may say. And so this is a special design that will work together with our own IC. And this is the detail of the fabrication. Uh, we have uh, um, our own uh, students that make this um, in our laboratory. And then this is um, a performance. This is a photograph of uh, this high voltage LED. And you can see the performance is uh, very linear. Uh, this is um, the light output power is uh, up to two watt, the optical power. And then the voltage is uh, about 110 volts. And this is the performance of the high voltage LED. And this is an embedded inductor on the back side of the silicon carrier. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, done by uh, Professor Johnny Singh's group. And uh, what I'm showing you here is the whole system, that everything has to work together. Like individually, you can break it down and then you can apply it to different applications. But what we did in this theme-based project here, and then how we work together to combine and different expertise and to realize uh, the systems and this is um, the, the whole theme of this uh, theme-based uh, project that we want to demonstrate here. And this is um, the bonding, this is a free chip bonding technology that was uh, developed in our uh, electronic packaging laboratory. It's a Professor Ricky Lee, the EPET laboratory. And uh, we developed this, uh, um, the gold stock bumping and this uh, flip chip technology. We not only use it in this um, uh, lighting system, we also we use this uh, flip chip technology in our um, micro display. And then this is the driver chip, and then this is a gold stock um, bonding and the corning, and you can see here. And then we also developed this uh, copper tin um, flip chip technology, 
again, it's uh, in our EPAD that we have this uh, expertise that we can develop uh, this uh, different technology for different applications. So this is the high voltage LED chip, this is silicon carrier. And then uh, with this um, uh, flip chip technology, we are able to dissipate all the heat that is uh, generated um, by the LED. Um, even though like, the LED is improving and there are less and less heat is being generated, but it's still it's not 100%. So there is uh, still uh, heat that need to be dissipated. And then we have this uh, flip chip technology that were developed that uh, be able to uh, do a good job on this. And then this is the underfield dispensing. It's uh, this um, high voltage LED chip that, that because of this uh, underfield with uh, technology, again, is developed in the EPAD. And you can see in this uh, video here that we, uh, it can like, uh, dissipate the heat very efficiently with this uh, underfilling um, technology. So combining um, our own homemade high voltage LED is an Excel 4 chip. And with this uh, LED driver and uh, with the gold stock flip chip bond, and then this uh, embedded inductor that we were able to have this uh, prototype uh, for um, solid state lighting. And you can see this uh, outside on, in our demo table. And then this, uh, we can put it in, um, in the um, a light bulb. And then the next one, it is the inductorless LED system, and the, we also want to use it to demonstrate this uh, LED uh, system on the chip that uh, we can like, put it in um, instead of uh, the individual LED that you normally see that are kind of uh, distributed mm. over the light bulb, and you can see that we have a small silicon carrier and that can uh, light up, uh, give you the same amount of light um, in a regular light bulb. So this is uh, our objective is uh, with this uh, light source. It's, um, it's a very low flickering and uh, using this switch converter free technology. That's a, um, Professor Philip Moss expertise that his team developed this. And uh, this, uh, it can, um, we can eliminate using an inductor. So we don't need an inductor at all. And then um, the disadvantage, well, you, it uh, might not be a disadvantage, is uh, not all the LEDs are light up by the same amount. But then it, it's, um, it, it's the control, the IC control have the quasi constant power and to maintain an average power to the LED, and this is the way that you can minimize the flickering. And normally that you will see um, like even a, 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 a um, this, uh, tube, the light bulb, um, the fluorescence light bulb, and it has a lot of flickering, and a lot of the LED um, light bulb is also flickering, and this uh, one is uh, it minimize the flickering. And, uh, and then we have this uh, dividing the LED to a string, so multiple segments that you can see here at their different sizes. And then with that, then we can get rid of the inductor and with the minimize uh, flickering. So this um, high voltage LED, again, it was uh, fabricated in-house. And uh, you can uh, like kind of uh, buy a high voltage LED, and uh, like I said earlier, and this is a 22 volt LED uh, chip that uh, with the um, different size is a five centimeter, um, uh, 5.2 millimeter by three millimeter. And then this one that we made in house it is a 18 volt high voltage LED chip and it's a three by one and a half a millimeter in size. And then you can see that, that we, without the packaging, that we can combine this LED chip with the driver and to make the LED systems. This is the inductorless topology that we make. This is a photograph of the, the um, six sub-LED cell, and then this also for the three uh, sub-LED cell. So because of this, the, the different LED string that we have to make the different size, the three cells and the six cell, Again, uh, this is a different size cell to work with this uh, inductorless design. 
And again, um, we developed technology to make the very uniform emission uh, from these uh, LED cells. And you can also see it's, um, the light emission is uh, very linear with the current. Uh, and then uh, the, the output power, is, it's not the best. Uh, I mean, you might say, hey, this it, is not as good as uh, what you can get from outside. But this is not what we are trying to optimize. It, it's, um, it, it's this uh, custom design that will work with the driver. That's uh, what we intended to do. And then again, this is the prototype that we make that we can uh, light up the LED light bulb. And then this is um, the fourth one is the one that I was telling you that uh, we can control um, instead of uh, having a two terminal LED that we make this uh, LED combining with the gallium nitride based uh, transistor as the driver. So instead of uh, having the current control of the LED, that you, you can get the, the um, you can turn on and off the LED with the gate terminal of the device. So it just like um, you turn on or shut off uh, um, uh, the LED with the gate control, and you can control the amount of current by the transistor, it's the drain current that you can control with uh, your, um, your drain voltage, and then you can control the amount of uh, current that will go through. Then this is a, a uh, photograph of uh, this a video of uh, showing you that this is a monolithic um, high electromobility transistor uh, with the LED, it is a truly monolithic control that you can control the on and off of the LED and also the amount of light with the transistor. And then this is uh, showing the transistor performance that with this uh, connection, with the serial connection of the LED, so all you um, have is the transistor is the shifted by about like three volts because uh, uh, there's a voltage drop of the LED. Otherwise, the transistor performance is exactly the same as a uh, standalone transistor. And then this is uh, um, the advantages of this um, integrated system. And, uh, and then the, um, the challenges is here is uh, we had to develop a common buffer platform for this uh, truly monolithic control. And then this is uh, we can um, turn a two terminal LED device, current control device into a three terminal um, voltage control device. Now, the last one, the, the uh, system that I want to tell you about is um, the LED on silicon micro display system. And I told you that this uh, we have been working on for over 10 years, but only the past couple years that it's really, really turning red hot all over the world. And uh, from uh, China and Taiwan, it's uh, all because of Apple. And then Apple, uh, this is uh, an announcement that uh, the, it was uh, um, in early October, and they were saying that they, um, they have uh, uh, really put in a lot of uh, heavy investment into micro LED, and then uh, they're going to have this Apple Watch, starting with the Apple Watch, and with the, uh, the micro LED display. And this, the difference is um, the Apple approach, and uh, they, yes, uh, they use a micro LED, but they use the individual LED that are like um, a micron in size, and then use the pick and place technology. What well, they said they, they they call the mass transfer. They pick and place um, a large number at the same time. And uh, but our approach is a monolithic approach, and then we have the individual pixel on the truly monolithic uh, gallium nitride substrate. So this is uh, um, what we have uh, developed over uh, the past uh, um, like seven, eight years. And we have this uh, integrated micro display system uh, for the display applications. And then uh, we make our in-house active matrix, the uh, micro LED array. 
and then we also have the, the um, have the uh, the passive um, driver too, the active matrix driver, and then we also integrate this uh, um, the power management unit, the PMU unit, as a DC to DC converter. Uh, this is uh, um, in addition to the Apple Watch. This is a, a needle eye application, and uh, this uh, a few years ago, the, the Google Glass uh, was uh, trying to um, do this. Uh, but they were not using LED technology. It was um, the l cost technology that they were using. Um, so here, this, uh, with the micro uh, LED uh, display that it can also uh, use for this application also. So this, uh, our integration approach is uh, to have this uh, LED active matrix um, that are fabricated, the individual pixel, that are fabricated on a two inch uh, wafer, of course, uh, you can uh, make like four inch on sapphire or even eight inch on silicon, and it's the same IC technology that you can use. And then what we demonstrate here is uh, 400 by 240 pixels, and uh, the, the pixel size, um, the pitch size is 30 micron, and uh, we have done this uh, um, like a couple years ago. And then we have the driver, the LED, the uh, active matrix LED driver was um, uh, done by a foundry on the eight inch wafer. And this is, uh, it doesn't require a very sophisticated small technology. We use it, we actually use a 0.5 micron technology, which is um, humongous uh, in the IC uh, business. And then this is, um, the, the, again, we use a flip chip bonding. So after we make this uh, active matrix, the LED um, uh, array, and then we have this uh, active matrix LED driver, and then we use the flip chip bonding technology to bond the two together. And then this uh, flip chip bonding, you need a really um, high precision uh, bonder uh, to do that. And then because there's uh, no LED foundry, so we had to do this uh, all in-house in our university. And then this is the size, it's a 30 micron um, by um, uh, 400, the number of pixels on one side, it's uh, 240 pixels on the other side. And this is a photograph of the CMOS um, chip that we got from the foundry. And then this is um, uh, the indium ball that we make it's, uh, in order to do the bonding. Again, optimizing this uh, Indian ball, and also um, we were trying to make different sizes. See, uh, we want to push the limit that how small that we can make the pixel. And we have uh, like optimized this, so we find that we can make this um, uh, ball size uh, down to five micron, uh, but we have to make the five micron uh, pitch yet. And we also have uh, developed a 256 by 192. This is a passive matrix uh, display that we uh, make. It's, um, the size of this is um, diagonally is uh, less than 0.2 inch. This is a, um, a video of uh, our display that you can see the quality of the video output as uh, from, uh, from this uh, display here. And again, you can see the wheel thing outside in our demo. And this is um, a 1300 MCD per meter square, and this is the light output. And in fact, the, I showed the demo, the, a lot of people think it's too bright to just uh, look at it directly. Actually, it's uh, bright enough that you can use it to make a projector. And we actually, we did that. And uh, so you can have, uh, what we did was just uh, take a regular projector, we just uh, took out the rest of it, and, and then use uh, three um, lattice chip that we made, and then we were able to project that on the wall uh, of a full color display. So this is uh, LED because it's, uh, it doesn't require any bad light, and it's uh, directly emitting, and uh, you can, um, it can emit a lot of light, it consumed it's, uh, for this particular um, chip here, it's a 0.6 watt. And then the, the, um, the operating temperature is uh, because it's, everything is inorganic and it can run from minus 55 
to positive 125 uh, degrees centigrade. And this is uh, uh, one of the major advantage of the uh, gallium nitride based LED um, compared with the other technology. So again, this is uh, uh, showing you that um, the quality, the visual quality of this uh, 400 by 240 um, display, uh, this is a 12 millimeter by seven millimeter um, emitting area. Uh, this is a 16 level, the grayscale. And with this um, chip that uh, Professor Yu is also working on this uh, visible light communication and using this uh, micro display and you can transmit data. Um, everything was integrated on the chip. And uh, so again, uh, you can also see the demo outside. And uh, from here, that give you a preview of the video of this uh, system here. This is uh, also called Live Fire. It's uh, depending on who you talk to. I think it's the Live Fire was um, the name that was given from a, a, um, a UK group. And uh, again, you can see that uh, using the uh, micro display that we made. So this um, uh, light fire technology is an alternative to the Wi-Fi technology. Um, like for uh, sometimes uh, you might not uh, want to use the Wi-Fi for uh, interference or whatever reasons. Then also the lighting system is also there. If uh, you can incorporate it into uh, the solid state lighting, then uh, you can also use it for the uh, communication applications. And then uh, with this uh, technology, we also want to integrate it with the, the, um, the power management system. And then we make another, um, again, because uh, this is the, the scalability of this uh, micro display, then we scale it down to a, a smaller display. And then uh, we integrate this, uh, the driver with the power management unit. And then um, again, the, this uh, AC LED driver and the switch capacitor converter that was uh, designed and then made in the foundry. And then again, we use uh, flip chip bonding technology. And then we can have, the, um, this is the, the new uh, driver with the power management unit. And then uh, we use the flip chip technology that we were able to make. And uh, another one that with the, this uh, converter uh, design that uh, specificity control, and then with this uh, 101 small cells that is uh, providing 500 micro amp uh, maximum current, and then this is on the uh, perimeter of the driver, and we were able to uh, scale this down again, have this uh, high quality visual display that uh, that you can see in uh, in the demo that we have outside. So this is uh, the conclusion that, um, that what we did with this uh, theme-based project, that uh, we uh, demonstrate a few systems, this uh, system uh, driver chip, this uh, custom device that we fabricate at the same time. Uh, we train many uh, students and uh, many students, uh, PhD students, um, they are now like faculty members in mainland China, and also some are doing their postdocs in Europe and all over the world. Um, that they have this uh, design and um, and fabrication technology, and also the IC designer that we trained, and also combining with our packaging uh, technology in our EPAD lab. And uh, we were able to demonstrate this uh, SOC, the system on the chip, that, um, that we were able to like, demonstrate a few of this uh, system. Again, this uh, enable you to have a lighting or display have your way that any way you want it, any size. 
and how you want to control. And these are the prototypes that are, I mentioned it to you. And one thing we still, we are working on is um, if you notice that this play that you saw, they are still monochromatic. So everybody asks, where's the full color display? And that's the cliffhanger. LGC got to give us more money to do that. <laughs> OK, so the, the, uh, we can get, into the, the, get to the Q&A session. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Professor La. Please come forward. And Professor Key and other team members, please come forward for the Q&A session. So we have a few minutes for Q&A. So any questions about this project? I like the idea of the Li-Fi and the communication aspect, because I can think of some unusual examples. Um, can you give examples of where you would think it would be particularly useful? The Li-Fi. Uh, Li-Fi. Li oh, well, thanks for asking. Uh, it was not, uh, was not a highlighted uh, functionality of the uh, system. Actually. No, no. We pushed pretty hard for it when we first uh, submitted the proposal, but we work on it anyway, so I thought it's kind of useful. Uh, maybe places where you do not want to have radio frequency interference, that will be one place. And, uh, or maybe at places where you would like the high-speed uh, wireless connectivity to be localized. I don't know about you, but last time when you went to a trade show and trying to use the Wi-Fi connection, say, in the uh, Hong Kong Convention Center, and good luck trying to get on the network because there is a finite bandwidth that is available to the user. The problem with Wi-Fi is the fact that you actually share the whole 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spectrum, and it's actually just used for everybody, everywhere. But for the light, you can actually localize it to get much higher data rate in a local area. And so maybe, maybe uh, by the time when we see 5G deployed in 2020, there may be some hot spot when you actually would actually use the light for actually uh, high speed uh, connections. Maybe inside a hospital, when the patient actually want to get on the internet but don't want to interfere with the uh, equipments that are nearby. Well, th this might be a, a stupid answer, so forgive me if I go wrong, but um, for instance, I, I use uh, vehicles that operate in the deep sea on an optical fiber cable, and we have the problem of converting information pulses from single mode fibers from a rotating part to a stationary part, and it's done through a fiber optic slip ring, which is very messy and mechanical. I'm guessing we could use this much more simply and effectively. First of all, it's definitely not a stupid question. You clearly are expert in this. In fact, visible light communication is uh, one of the key uh, application people want to do it is for underwater communication because radio frequency decays very quickly. That's why submarine uses very, very low carrier frequency, like a few hundred kilohertz. But light is something that actually propagates in seawater very well. So No, no, no. Yeah. You're, going off, you're going off rails there. <laughs> Get back. Um, I'm talking of, of the actual slip rings which convert rotating parts to stationary parts, which are used in winches and optical fiber calculation systems. They're fairly high power systems uh, worldwide. And the system at the moment are messy, and I'm guessing you could do a better job. Okay. Oh, I guess so, yeah. Actually, uh, maybe uh, I, I, I would like to ask about, uh, actually we have uh, like uh, two uh, LED systems that uh, we talk about. So one of them is the, the one with the inductor, which with the embedded inductor, the other one with, uh, without the inductor. So uh, maybe this one could, uh, Professor Philemon, can you talk a little bit about that, the LED lighting? Okay, so um, in typical LED lighting, uh, probably uh, you know from the previous presentation, we know that um, LED is current control. Okay, so basically the current level go up and down will affect the brightness of the LED. So that's why uh, in general you use a very large inductor, okay, as some kind of filter to make sure the current will not go up and down. So in the inductorless LED driver, we don't have any inductor because we try to integrate everything on the system. In this case, it's quite difficult to integrate a large inductor. Now the mean large mean uh, in terms of 100 micro Hamley inductor in the, the integrated system. So we eliminate the inductor, but the problem actually is if you 
eliminate the inductor, we always have frequency around because you know that um, the AC input is 50 hertz, so the voltage go up and down, up and down. Okay, if you rectify that, you have a 100 hertz signal go up and down. And the brightness of LED will go up and down, they have 100% flickering. So in the recent uh, medical study, we, no we noticed that that kind of low frequency flickering actually affect health. Okay, so in the uh, inductless LED driver, we have an idea saying that, well, if the voltage go up and down, if you can control the current down and up at the same rate, we can keep the power constant. So that's uh, working on that. Uh, system to maintain the power go, go to the LED is almost constant and then reduce the frequency. So that is the design of the inductorless uh, LED driver, which is uh, quite different from the conventional LED driver design. So any other questions? With this, maybe we would like to thank uh, Professor yeah. Lau and the team. Thank you, Professor Lau and the team. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our presentation session. Please join me in expressing our appreciation for all of our speakers, facilitators, and honorable guests of today's symposium.